Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us introduce codon now. As I mentioned before also that codon is defined as a group of three bases which specifies an amino acid. So three bases together and these three bases together will code for one particular amino acid. So they will always be together. So if you have a sequence like this, a long sequence maybe. So in that case, how do you know uh, which amino acid will it code for? So just divide it in groups of three and then you can determine which amino acid will it code for. So this will code for a particular amino acid, again this will code for some amino acid, this will code for amino acid and so on. So this is how it will code and that and this group of three is known as codon. It is also known as code word or triplet code, triplet code because three of them are there so triplet means three. So that is why triplet code. So a total of 64 codons exist which corresponds to 20 amino acids. So let us see how 64 codons exist. So let us have a look at this. As I said, codon is a group of three bases. So let us denote the three bases as X, Y, Z. So the first position X can be taken up by four bases because we have four bases A, G, T, C. So this position can be, can be taken by any of these Again, that second position can also be taken by any of these. So there are four possible options for this position. Similarly, the last position can also be taken by any of these. So the total number of possibilities would be 4 into 4 into 4. That is 64 possibilities. So some of the examples are like AUG, AGT. So these are all examples of codon, UUU, UUA. So all are examples of codon. Now one codon codes for only one amino acid. So if you take example of any of the codon, let us suppose, uh, let us take an example. Let us suppose ACG. So this is a codon and this codes for an amino acid called threonine. So one codon can code for only one amino acid. Now this can code only for threonine and not for any other amino acid. Similarly, let us suppose AAA. This is a codon which codes for lysine. So this can code only for lysine and not for any other amino acid. But multiple codons can code for the same amino acid. But this is possible that threonine is being coded by many different options. For example, ACA or ACC, these also code for threonine. So that means one amino acid, I mean, one codon can code for only one amino acid, but one amino acid can be coded by multiple codons and that is how all the 64 codons have been utilized because there are multiple codons which code for one particular amino acid. So all the 64 codons get used up in that way. There are two types of codons, sense codons and nonsense codons. So what is the meaning of sense and nonsense? So sense means those codons which code for amino acid. Now out of these 64 codons, there are few codons which do not code for any amino acid. So those codons are called nonsense codons. And other than that, all the other codons are sense codons. Now total 64 codons are, exist, out of which 61 are sense codons. So most of them codes for an amino acid. The only three Codons which do not code for any amino acid are called nonsense codons. So one example of nonsense codon is UGA, UGA, UAA and UAG. These are the three examples of nonsense codons. So these are often referred to as the stop codons because they do not code for any amino acid and whenever such kind of codon is encountered, the process stops, the process of translation stops. So let us look at the codons for various amino acids. As I said, there are 64 codons which codes for the 20 amino acids. So look at this chart, this shows all possible combinations. So at the center you have the four letters which denote the four bases. 
A, C, G and U. So we have taken U because proteins will be synthesized from RNA. So RNA has A, C, G and U. So at the center we have denoted the first letter. Then in the next line we have denoted the second letter. As I said the entire codon will be made up of three letters that is one two and three so the first letter is denoted at the center then second letter is denoted at the second line and third letter is denoted at the third line so here how to how to read this graph i am just giving an example let us consider c so c c u so it can be C, C, U, it can be C, 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 it can be C, C, A or it can be C, C, G. So here you can see these are the possible combinations. So center is C, that is the first letter. Second letter is also going to be C. Third letter can be U, third letter can be C, third letter can be A, third letter can be G. So any of these will actually code for proline. So all these combinations will specify Proline. So proline is an amino acid which is coded by four different codons and these are the four different codons which code for proline. Similarly, let us take some other example. Let us consider G or let us consider U, anything you want. So let us suppose with U, we see there are some of the stop codons here. You see here you can see. So for the stop codons, you do not have any amino acid. So here also stop and here also stop. So what are the codons for stop codons? It is U, A and then G or A both. So U, A, G, U, A, A and which one? And this one that is U, G, A, U, G, A. So these are the stop codons. Let's take some other example. Let us consider say C. So in C again if you see C A U C A C. So C A U and C A C. Both of them code for an amino acid called histidine. So this is how you have to read it from here and just looking at this map some of them represent the map in tabular form as well. So in both the cases you can just look at the map and then you can determine that uh, which codon will code for which amino acid. So I hope this is clear to you how to read this. So now let us talk about the features of genetic code. Now that we have discussed what is genetic code, how uh, the genetic code is deciphered, let us look at some of the features of genetic code. So let us look at the features of genetic code. So the first feature is it is a triplet codon because it, it represents or it has a group of three bases and triplet means three. 61 sense codons and 3 nonsense codons. So there are just 3 codons which do not code for any specific amino acids and they are also called as the stop codons. So whenever such codon is encountered, uh, so the transcription just stops. I mean the process of translation stops. So here you see the stop codons. So these are the stop codons. One codon codes only for one amino acid. So if you uh, take an example, let us suppose we say CAU. So CAU codes for an amino acid called histidine. So now this CAU cannot code for any other amino acid now. So this, this shows that the code is specific. So it codes only for a particular amino acid and it cannot code for any other amino acid. One amino acid can be coded by multiple codons. That means, let us take an example of uh, histidine. So this histidine is coded by CAU. It is also coded by CAC. So both of them code for histidine. So that means the code is degenerate. Degenerate means multiple uh, codons can code for the same amino acid. Code is read in contiguous fashion. So when I say contiguous, that means in a continuous fashion. So there is no punctuation in between. So somewhat like this, let us suppose if this is the code, so this is how it will be. So there will be no punctuation in between. So you do not have any punctuation. So if you want to know what does this entire, which protein does it code for, so you will have to segregate it into groups of three. And that is how you can determine which amino acid it codes for. 
It is nearly universal. So when I say nearly universal, it means that it is applicable for all organisms starting from a tiny bacteria to human beings. However, there are a few exceptions like some protozoa where uh, the concept of this genetic code is not applicable. AUG is one such codon which performs dual function. So AUG codes for the amino acid methionine. So that is one purpose of it. And the other purpose is that it acts as the initiator codon. So that means like the way we have the stop codons. Similarly, we need an initiator codon as well. So AUG acts as the initiator codon. So these are some of the important features of the genetic code. So now let us look at some of the examples of genetic code. How exactly do we decipher a genetic code? Now we will always have to take the example of this table. Let us suppose that the sequence of the mRNA or messenger RNA is given like this. So this messenger RNA is the result of the process of transcription. So this messenger RNA is being formed from DNA. Now looking at this sequence, will you be able to decide or will you be able to tell the sequence of the amino acids which will be formed as a result of translation? So the sequence of amino acids would be, so looking at this sequence of mRNA, what would be the sequence of the amino acid? So let us divide group it all into three nitrogenous bases because group of three bases will represent one codon. So we first of all identified the codons by dividing it into group of threes. So now A, U, G. So let us try to find it out. A is the first letter. So this is A. Second letter is U. So this is U. So A, U and the third letter is G. So A, U, G is for methionine. So this will be methionine. After that, U, U, U. And as I said, methionine is always the initiator codon. AUG is always the initiator codon. Now U, U, U. It is somewhere here. So this is U, U, U and it is for phenylalanine. So this will be PHE. Then U, U, C. So where is U, U, C? It is again phenylalanine. So this will be phenylalanine. Again U, U, C which will be phenylalanine. Again U, U, U that is again phenylalanine. This is also phenylalanine and U, U, C is phenylalanine. So this is how we can determine the sequence of the amino acid. Now let us try the opposite way around. Let us suppose that the amino acid sequence is being given and we want to find out the sequence of the mRNA. So let us try to do this. So first one is methionine. So methionine is being given by only one uh, codon that is AUG. Then PHE that is phenylalanine. Now if you look at this Phenylalanine can be UUC, it can also be UUU. So phenylalanine can be UUU, it can also be UUC. Now how do we know whether it will be UUU or UUC? So that is a confusion. So creating the um, messenger RNA sequence from amino acid sequence is difficult. That is because of the which property of genetic code that is because genetic code is degenerate that is multiple codons represent or specify the same amino acid whereas the other way around is easy you can determine the sequence of the amino acids from the mRNA sequence and this is because of the property that the uh, genetic code is specific that is one amino acid can code only for that is one codon can code only for one amino acid thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.